Walker with Began Japan Channel here in beautiful Hawaii. Got a gorgeous sunset going right now, but it's a little bit too windy for me to walk along the beach. So I'll stay in the windscreen of this tree here. So back with another vlog. And you might be asking, what's this about science in the title? Music is so subjective. And uh, yes, I've talked about this before. I agree, music is very subjective, especially on an individual level. But I made the argument that, that um, there's different levels of quality of appreciation of music and that that is a kind of a more objective measure of art if you have a really high quality reaction uh, so you know I've, I've talked about this before but that basically was a thesis this is not totally subjective especially when you look at a group of people and you find that there's you know consistently amongst a lot of fans of a musician like Angelina Jordan you get these extraordinary measures of quality of response. Uh, things like, oh, they only listen to Angelina Jordan exclusively now, or they cry every time, or, you know, they've uh, listened to a very different genres growing up, and, but now they, they like her. Things like that. So I've had that as a theory that I've pushed for some time. You know, I don't want to just be a fanboy. I want to feel like I'm more strongly grounded, and I think that I am. There's a podcast by Alan Pomp Papier and Pontus Osterlin that uh, just goes from strength to strength. There's really, really been some great uh, episodes recently kind of talking about this effect that Anthony has on people. So first, I just want to show a brief clip of, of the podcast, a recent episode. Beautiful. The word is elongated. That has a nice run to it there. It the has a very nice run to it. Very soft and very delicate. And in this song, she has four of them. And they are all a little different. Do you know what emotion I heard in that word song? I heard a type of achiness where she was reminiscing about something from the past that she misses. I think you're right. It's lovely that you can pick up different things in just how we say things or how we sing words. Uh, but then uh, there was also another clip from this podcast I want you to take a look at. I think with Genius and with Angelina in particular, she has the means, her inherent talent is manifest. I think anyone, even if you don't enjoy her music, like some people I know, like my wife, that doesn't particularly enjoy her music. We must have the same wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you see, that kind of thing got me thinking that uh, maybe this uh, thesis I have about quality of emotion response isn't as strong as I think it is because of the problem of confirmation bias. I'm always listening to people who are very strong fans of Angelina Jordan. We're in a rabbit hole. The way that the social media algorithms work even exaggerates this kind of tendency to have confirmation bias even more. They're always just pointing you to people who think the way that you do, you know. So, uh, so when I've talked about my comments about Angelina Jordan being these, you know, 
very, very strong comments of very high quality emotional response. Well, that's actually, you know, it's quite a small group of people. I'm talking to you, Julio, and you, Andy, and you, Ron, and and nine baller you guys know who you are it's kind of the same relatively small group of people that i'm hearing from over and over again and there's other people too but there's a certain core group that i hear from and so i was thinking maybe that i i have a really biased sample here that other singers certainly have fan clubs and people who are really strong fans and so maybe if i was like in an adele fan fan club or you know just listening to the people who are the most into Adele I'd find the same high quality emotional response so that's what the science is about in this I actually try to use a method of looking at comments that was more randomized that wasn't just looking at um, you know a small a small group of of the most favorable comments so I'm still refining this, but uh, the first thing I did was I just did a, a search where I just told myself, okay, like the 10th the result, I'm going to look at that, and I'm just going to go very carefully through all of the comments and try to find the most positive comments that I can. For, in this case, I did it with Adele. So for Adele, it turned out to be a video of a uh, live performance of Set Fire to the Rain, and with Angelina Jordan, it was... Um, <clears throat> the Whitney Houston, the recent um, studio version of I Have Nothing. You say they will never chew, never chew in the games you play. You would always win, always win. But I said fire to the rain, wash it for us. And, uh... Adele does have one advantage here is that she does have a lot more fans. Those are a lot more comments to go through. But uh, Angelina also had quite a lot of comments. And so when I did that, I got to tell you, uh, my, uh, you know, it doesn't look like there's that much confirmation bias going on. This is preliminary. But looking at Adele's comments, for example, these are, you know, the most positive comments I could find. There are words like masterpiece, uh, you know, the best voice I've ever heard, things like that, you know, very strong positive comments. But two things about them. One is that it's almost always about the, you know, technical quality of her singing, like, you know, she has a great voice. And the other thing is, uh, it's usually there's a qualifier of one of, you know, one of the best voices of her generation, not like, um, there are a few cases where, you know, this is the best thing I've ever heard anywhere, but it's mainly, you know, this is one of the best singers and uh, you know, not comparing with historical greats, not saying, you know, this is on a par with uh, a Mozart or something like that. But with Angelina Jordan, some of the stuff is, is the same, you know, masterpiece, the best singer I've ever heard. But then you just get these superlatives that are stronger than that. Like we have two people who had just found Angelina Jordan and both of them were saying they were comparing her comparing her to Mozart saying you know the the best in, in, in a generation or one in a billion and uh, just uh, you know super super strong um, comments uh, you know, so there's a comparison with historical figures and then there's also stuff beyond the the technical like uh, talking about you know I cry every time and uh, just a wonderful, just such a great human being. So, so again, this is just preliminary. That's why I have in quotes, you know, scientific proof. But I want to do a more of a deep dive into this. Of, you know, actually getting as the most random samples I can get of the, you know, the most, the strongest praise for different singers, and see if other singers also have the same highest these super high levels of quality of liking that Angelina does and so far you know again it was as I thought you know so Angelina just is better than Adele even if you like Adele better <laughs> uh, of course on an individual level you know it's you like what you like but um, 
Yeah, very interesting findings. So look out for more of with that later. And I'll just close this with a clip that I've used before. Um, and I actually use it quite a few times, but I don't care because it's such a great, great example of Angelina Jordan's greatness. And it's an example of her taking an Adele song and making it so much better. And I've taken out the instrumentation so you can just listen to this voice. But technically, you could say there's not, it's not even that great technically. It's just how it is used and how the emotion is expressed. All right, Chris Walker with Big A Japan Channel here in beautiful Hawaii. Aloha. Next child will be the ending of me. Now I see the love is a game for fools to play in thy fooling. What a cruel thing to self inflict their pain. Love is a game for fools to play. Oh, in thy fooling, what a cruel thing to self inflict their pain.